Hey, this is Jared with Uncontained Curiosity, and I know it's been a while since uh, I've made a video, but uh, I think this is a good opportunity for me to finally have like a straight comparison with these two. Uh, I finally have it to a point where my normal cello has 3D printed bridge that I've like perfected since my video on how to make one. Uh, then I also have the same string set up. These are the Pro Artes by Diodario. And they're both pearl on core with like an aluminum wrap on some and I think like tungsten on the lower strings. So both of these have the same exact setup and pretty much the main difference is the, the body is. We got wood on one side with a, you got the sound post in this one. And then the design of this is all steel if you want to see my other videos on it. Uh, you might also notice it's now black. <laughs> it's all like painted. Uh, for the year since I posted my last video, it one it was starting to rust, and I thought I liked that look. Uh, I thought I was gonna like like a rustic and kind of like a patina, but it didn't end up aging well. Uh, I didn't really like the end product, so I found a protective enamel, and I just redid a lot of stuff on it. I also fixed a lot of the problems on the fingerboard. Still isn't perfect, but. There's a lot of low spots and stuff that was just a byproduct of, uh, you know, my first time fabricating something and trying to get all these curves and stuff. Uh, finally, I'll kind of go through the 3D print setup. It's even the same material for the, uh, in the same print settings. So like infill and wall count and all that kind of stuff. It's mainly just the, the design differences uh, going into the how it's like mating to the cello and like make sure it's not totally like a different uh, like so it doesn't stick out. So for this you can see that it's 3D printed and it's PLA. Uh, you can see I put these holes in here and actually the holes in there have a purpose because it creates another wall and but in doing so you now have um, a wall thickness there and more material as opposed to just your infill. So even though I did it semi for looks, it's also functional. And what would happen with the other design is that the, the, the legs, once they get to a certain length, would start to bend. And I mean, this has uh, been set up like this for, I guess, uh, a little bit over four or five months. And there's pretty much minimal flex uh, as opposed and it's like pretty straight as opposed to my other setup which was uh, I couldn't even keep a tune on it and the a lower tension string I had uh, the helicores on them they didn't help the situation still if I would have put these higher tension strings on there it would have been a disaster and you might notice my really interesting preamp setup I did that kind of last second so those are the comparisons I'm gonna try to play like some original music but uh, try to get like a straight comparison on these
thing that you'll notice um, immediately from going to this to the other, and I kind of mentioned in another video, but this has uh, more of a presence to it as opposed to uh, I was I was saying it's like noticeably louder, but as I perform with it, I wouldn't say it's louder. I would say it has more presence, and that's because of the uh, and actually, if you look at how a presence knob works on an amp, it's almost like the same stuff going on, but now it's like a mechanical as opposed to an electrical phenomenon. So this feedback loop of higher frequencies is going throughout the entire body, and that amplification of the higher frequencies in mid-range definitely uh, makes it have more presence. It's broader and it cuts through and mix a lot better and it still maintains that base because of the material and uh, such. But then we'll go to the wood cello and you'll notice it's like way more uh, like kind of mellowed out but it's still just as loud it, but it has way more low end and it's of course not like cutting through the mix as much. Uh, though it is also more focused. This has like a very loose sound uh, with with no sound post, it has like a rib going through it. You can kind of see where the welds are for that, but uh, that rib is in place of a sound post, and it it makes sure that there's not a lot of material that would be there that would hold back like you putting your energy into it and that cutting volume. So uh, it would it be too stiff. So I kind of like the resonance that you get with. Uh, no sound post and the rib design that I put. So I, sometimes you, if I go directly from that to this, there's a slightly different uh, scale length. And so I sometimes kind of get like used to that. So you might notice I'll be like quite a bit off if I've just transferred instruments. And then also some of the geometry is ever so slightly different. that you might immediately notice like the difference of how focused the low end is and then at the high end there's not a lot of like resonance there and so it's pretty difficult to like have a feel for how I need to play that and then going to this the high end you kind of gotta 
play it out more and get a little more technique in there to make sure it sounds more focused and uh, also has like a good legato kind of sound to it. Where this, it just it has way sweeter high end. So I'll, I'll kind of do a little bit more high end stuff so you can immediately see the, the difference there. highlights the difference into that focus sound that I keep uh, alluding to. So when you're trying to have more staccato and just like a really focused sound, this is not really uh, focused on, like it doesn't have that kind of sound to it and it just resonates too much. So even if I have like, it, you, you're still hearing it ring out. Let me mute all those strings, and there's that still that that resonance that goes after the note, and so that gets accentuated as you play. strings you can hear the, the room river but very little uh, tail end on that that sound uh, so it's way more focused <laughs> Thank you. 
so I hope that was like a pretty good uh, demo of the two uh, material and construction differences here. And uh, I think they both have a pretty good place, but much like many other acoustic instruments that have come in different forms, uh, these definitely specialize in two do uh, totally different things. So what I would say after trying to perform with these, uh, this is this is really good for recording and I can add effects and other things after the mix whereas opposed to this, the steel cello uh, the steel cello definitely has a uh, that presence to it like I keep talking about but it's really good on like a public menu uh, it doesn't feed back as much I think that has to do with like the material uh, I mean this is uh, I think 15 or 18 pounds and then this is 8 pounds so you have more material to move and so it requires more energy to have it feed back on itself and so then uh, the sound that does come from it when I mic it up it already has more presence and then it requires less uh, amplification and that amplification because there's already less of it uh, from like monitors that also has a like there's a higher threshold for this to resonate so not only is there less sound going into it that can resonate uh, from like not direct transmission uh, but also if I were to send that same volume of sound into the, this as opposed to my wood cello the wood cello would more readily uh, resonate because there's less mass and less material there uh, to to move so it requires less like energy to move the material and therefore uh, this feeds back more so I love performing with this uh, even with like a piezo setup I, I rarely use that I can get away with just miking it so they definitely have uh, really a good use and it's not like I preferred one over the other uh, I still love the sound of my uh, steel cello just because it's it's so different but it's not like I've forgotten about my wood cello because it definitely has a, a place as well